Warm greetings to the learners. This is Dr. Menakshi, and we have started a very nice journey of learning and exploring the different aspects of advanced statistics and specifically the industrial statistics. In that journey, so far we have been discussing how to prepare a control chart for mean using range and standard deviation. Then we explored how to prepare a control chart for range and after that, we learned how to prepare a control chart for standard deviation. Also, from those charts, we actually found that not in all the cases, we can get a data sample which is already in control or the process is uniform. So there are certain data samples which are either out of control or which we have also called as the discarded samples so we learned how to rectify those discarded samples also so before moving ahead I would like you to subscribe my channel so that you can stay in touch with me and learn and explore and we can proceed with this journey of learning okay now in this video today we will be proceeding from the last video where we actually prepared a control chart for standard deviation right so in that control chart as you can see on your screen this was the data that we had for the sample of 35 in which we had 12 observations and we plotted the control chart for standard deviation with the help of a process with the help of a formula uh, we first calculated the standard deviation with the formula and then we uh, found the value of central line by finding the average of the standard deviation then we explored how to find out the upper control limit by using the constants b3 and b4 and using the formula s bar b4 for upper control limit and s bar b3 for lower control limit and after calculating all these values we use these four values to determine to prepare this line graph for standard deviation so after preparing this graph we realize that there is something which is happening in this graph now what we can see we can see from this graph that two points corresponding to sample 15 and sample 31 lie outside the upper control limit so you can see this is the green line which is the upper control limit these are the two points which actually show that the sample points are out of control therefore the control chart here indicates that the process is not under statistical control so some assignable causes are present in the process therefore to bring the process under statistical control it is very important it is very necessary to investigate the assignable causes and take corrective actions to eliminate them and for doing that thing first of all as such we need to identify the points which actually are out of your control limits so we have identified those two points uh, the sample point 15 which has a value of 317.5 and you can see the upper control limit value is basically 245.4 so obviously the sample 15 uh, point is exceeding the upper control limit then another point is point 31 which has a value of 394.9 again higher than 245.44 so that means how many points we have which are basically number of discarded samples which we represent with the help of small d so d is basically the number of discarded samples and here we have two sample points which are discarded one so i'll just reduce the size of this map a bit and place it here so that we can proceed ahead with the further calculations on the same table okay now as such as per the graph there are two points 31st point and the 15th point point. 
So first of all, we are going to highlight the 15th point. Okay, so here's the 15th point. You can see the value is 317, which is actually exceeding the upper control limit of 245. I'll just highlight this point here and which was this other point that was your point number 31. So I'll highlight this also. Fine. So now we have uh, identified the two points which are basically the discarded samples D. D is your what? It is the number of discarded samples. So before proceeding ahead, I just want to insert one uh, tab here. So I'm going to write here revised control limits. Okay. And you know why? Because we are going to revise the control limits here. So your S bar which we have calculated here, the central line is going to be revised now. So for that purpose, what we'll do? We'll uh, write down either revised central line or you can also write, uh, write it down like S bar new. For that purpose, we have a formula. line what's that formula if you remember from the previous videos the formula for revised central line is sum of all the values that you have obtained in your standard deviation right minus the values of those data points which are out of control okay so divided by k minus d so here k is 35 okay k minus your D. D is the number of discarded sample points. So this comes your revised central line. Fine. Okay. So this way we found the new or revised central line. So before moving ahead I'll just put a dollar sign so that the values can get uniform for rest of the sample points. All right. So this is all about your revised central line. Now Okay. We have to find out the revised uh, upper control limit and your revised lower control limit. You can also write down uh, UCL new and LCL the lower control limit new okay for UCL as you remember the formula that we have calculated was S bar that was your central line so here the central line is revised to S bar into B4 right and for lower control limit the formula was S bar into your V3 right so what we have to do here we have to put a dollar sign as such we discussed earlier on also that in Excel it is very convenient very easy and uh, very much accessible to plot graphs and to make use of the formulas and data but you have to be very careful while plotting the formulas the graphs a single gap in the instruction will create a lot of trouble while plotting the graphs or finding out the values of some specific data okay so now we have obtained revised control limits so what we'll do for the value of standard deviation 
right okay revised control limit and these values i'll just simply copy these values and you know why i'm doing this copy here so that we won't be troubled by deleting the points which actually are responsible here for the out of control sample so you can see i have selected these points and copied here i'll insert a line graph and this is your line graph for the revised limits okay now you'll see again here we can see some values are exceeding from the upper control limit first of all i am going to delete the grid lines i'll expand it a bit okay now you can see there are point number 15 and point number 31 okay so if you remember point number 15 and 31 already been highlighted a bit here so i can conveniently just select and delete okay see the moment i'm deleting there is a change in your graph all right so i'll just place both the graphs next to each other so that we can identify what changes have occurred after re plotting the graph with the help of your revised limits value okay see in the previous one we have two points which were showing out of control sample points for the given data and after pro uh, processing after taking all the necessary steps to remove those assignable causes and eliminating them we obtained a new line graph in which there is no single data point which is exceeding the given limits that we have calculated for the upper control limit and the lower control limit so i hope now this construction of control charts for standard deviation have been very clear to you we learned how to construct the control chart for standard deviation and in today's video we learn how to revise that control chart with the help of uh revising the standard deviation central line formula okay so uh, with this last topic we have come to the final conclusion of control charts for variables so in control chart for variables we did prepare control chart for mean we learned how to uh, revise the control chart for mean then we explored how to prepare a control chart using the range and how to revising if there is there are certain points which show some discarded samples then we prepared control chart for mean using standard deviation and also learned how to revise those charts also if there are certain points which are discarded after that we learned how to prepare a control chart for range and its revision and in the last we learned how to prepare a control chart for standard deviation and finally we conclude with this video how to actually prepare a revised control chart for standard deviation so with these all control charts we come to the end of control chart for variables now in the next video we'll be starting with the next series of control chart for attributes i hope the concepts have been clear to you if you have any query if you have any doubt feel free to reach out to my channel and we'll be discussing many more such learning endeavors i hope the video has been clear to you 
Have a great learning time and keep exploring.